quite handy to have this question on paper in front of you because you will need to refer back to this uh, um, this map as you're going through subsequent sections of it. But we can see here we're starting off being asked to draw the display formula of compound J. So we need to be working out what's actually happening here. We're starting with a halo alkane and we're adding NaOH. And from the NaOH, the important part of that is the OH minus. The actual reaction that we're looking at here is um, nucleophilic substitution and we're converting a halo alkane into an alcohol. Now you'll notice that we are drawing the displayed formula. I've highlighted that on here. You need to be paying close attention to that within the exam. And the displayed formula has to show every single bond. So you can see here my OH has got a, a bond between the O and the H. It's a really common one to miss and a common one to forget, but it will lose you the mark despite all of the other hard work getting you to very close to the right answer. When we take a look at 1.2, the mechanism for the reaction to and an essential condition used to ensure that it's the major product. Not an uncommon question, so we need to be prepped for it. And I want to try to encourage people to understand mechanism names and not try to learn them because you have so many of them it's easy to get mixed up. If we look at reaction 2 we have NH3. NH3 has a lone pair which makes it electron rich so we're thinking it's going to be a nucleophile. We also know that we're replacing a Br with an NH2. So if we're replacing, we're substituting. So what we have is nucleophilic substitution. And if I want to get to this as the major product, what I'm looking at as an alternative is multiple substitutions. To prevent that, I'm going to use excess NH3. For 1.3, we've got a little bit more um, amount of substance. We've got a calculation to do, and we need to pay close attention to the detail here. That 75% yield um, can lead to a bit of confusion, but it is actually very straightforward. In the first instance, we've got a mass of 1-bromopropane, and we can work out its MR. So we can see that we've got 0 0.205 moles of that. Now, we also know that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, that one mole of 1-bromopropane will make one mole of 1-aminopropane. So 0 0.205 moles would make 0 0.205, but we've been told that we're only getting a 75% yield. So we've got to find 75% of 0 0.205, and that gives us 0 0.154 moles. From there, I've got moles of 1-amino propane, and I can find out its MR, in this case 59, and from there, I can work out its mass, and that's going to take me to 9.07 grams. Don't get to that final section and fall at the final hurdle. Pay close attention to the detail of the question. It wants an appropriate number of significant figures. Now, because the data that we were given was the three significant figures, we can't go any higher than that. So our answer must be to three significant figures. Moving on to 1.4, and we are dealing with quite a big compound here, C9H21N. We're going to try to use information from earlier to make this more manageable. You'll also notice we're being asked for the skeletal formula. Now, that's c 9 h 21 could throw you. But if you look back at the examples that we have in our question already, can we find anything that that's a multiple of? And I'm hoping that you're recognising that that equates to three propyl groups, three C3H7s. Now, there was a question earlier about what the condition would be to give us that particular amine. If we reversed that and had an excess of the halo alkane, we could end up with multiple substitutions. And we can find that this will react further. And you'll know that we can have primary, secondary, tertiary amines and also quaternary ammonium salts. 
So to draw it, I'm putting my N at the center. I'm reminding myself it's skeletal formula, so I'm showing three propyl groups coming from it. And because it's three alkyl groups coming from it, that means it's a tertiary amine, and we get the second mark on there. For 1.5, a reagent and conditions used in reaction three, well, you do need NaOH, but it needs to be in ethanol. That's what's going to be getting you to the mark. And the mechanism itself, well, if you take a look at it, we are starting with a haloalkane and we're ending up with an alkene. We are removing things from it. So we're eliminating things from it. And that's how we can remember and understand that this is elimination rather than try to simply learn it as a fact. For the mechanism itself, we've got the OH minus, we've got our one bromopropane, and we've got to think about where the OH minus is going to attack. And in this particular mechanism, it's acting as a base. So it's going to attack a hydrogen. Now, there are many hydrogens on here. You've got to pick the right ones. It's going to be a hydrogen on the carbon adjacent to the carbon that the bromine is bonded to. So I'm going to draw a curly arrow to go in and I got my first mechanism mark. That essentially means that the OH minus has formed a bond with the H and taken it away with it to make H2O. So I've now got a bond which doesn't exist anymore. The electrons have to go somewhere. So I'm going to draw my curly arrow going in to where the double bond will be. I'm using those electrons to form the double bond. But the double bond would then mean I've got five bonds around the right hand carbon. So I need to lose something. And I know what I'm going to lose from the product that we have. I'm making an alkene. So I lose the one bromopropane. Sorry, I lose the bromine. And that's going to leave me with my propene as a product.